come from Exodus, Exodus chapter 5, verse 1. Exodus chapter 5, verse 1. And the message that the Lord gave me was in, is entitled, Let My People Go. Yes. Let My People Go. And the verse reads, And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a, fast, hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? that I should obey his voice to let Israel go. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And if you will travel with me to Exodus 6, starting in verse 1, Exodus 6, starting in verse 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shall you see. And I want you to put your name there. The Lord said unto Sabrina, Amen. the Lord said unto Naya, yes. the Lord said unto Toya, Amen. the Lord said unto Robert, Amen. now you shall see Amen. what I will do, what I, the Lord, yes. what I will do to Pharaoh. Yes. Yes. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he, this is talking of the Lord, he drive them out of his land. And God spoke unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. I am the Lord. What I've come to speak to you about this morning is three points. First point, he sees, he hears, he knows, and he's ready to deliver. He sees, he hears, he knows, and he's ready to deliver. But then we're going to see in the scripture, Satan doesn't let go easily. He does not let go easily. When you have put your foot forward and put your foot down and said, I'm going to serve the Lord with all of my heart and with all that's within me, Satan is going to let that happen easily. So you get ready. Get ready and buckle down for a fight. And I'm not talking about a fight in your own strength. I'm talking about a fight to believe. A fight to keep your faith in Jesus. A fight to keep going forward instead of going backward. Amen. And my last point is going to be God always has the last word. Right. Let Amen. my people go. Right. He always has the last word. I don't care what you've been believing, what lie you've yeah. been believing. God's word stands true. He is faithful. He hasn't failed you yet. Amen. I was thinking about when Pastor Matt was talking about the groaning of creation and the miracle of creation. But I was thinking about the miracle of a heart that's been regenerated. A miracle of a heart that's been given to the Lord. A life that was in complete misery. I don't know about you, but before I had the Lord, I was in darkness. I was in chaos. I was in confusion. I was in addiction. I was in so many things. And the Lord pulled me out. Yes. And he's still delivering. Yeah. Even when we get saved and give our heart to the Lord, you better believe he still is delivering continuously. Amen. And we were talking to the kids about delivering from sin, from Satan, and from self. We still need a delivering God. We still need him to show up. We still need him to change our hearts. And some of those things, even Pastor, I thought... Every time he comes up here, I think he's going to preach my sermon. But, but that's how I know that I'm on point. <laughs> that I'm hearing from the Lord. Because we like to, sometimes we get comfortable. I get comfortable in my misery sometimes. I guess we feel like we're in control or something. We get comfortable in our anger. We get comfortable in shutting people out. We get comfortable in resentment. We get comfortable in unforgiveness. 
We get comfortable in pride. And then we tend to hold on to that and not give it over to the Lord. But I'm here to tell you today that God wants to bring you into better things. Yes. God wants to bring you into sweeter Amen. things. Yes. And I believe the Lord gave us a word of let my people go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you will travel with me to Exodus 3. You know, I always like to set the stage. I always like to tell you exactly what's going on. What the, what the condition of the people are. Now, I want to I make this known. That this is God's people. This is the condition of God's people. Okay? And we are God's people. And sometimes we can find ourselves in this very condition. Exodus 3, verse 7 says, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt. Egypt, which represents the world. Yes. We are God's people yes. living in this world. Yes. And I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. Verse 8. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land. Say good land. Good good land. land. And a large, yes. unto a land flowing with milk and honey, yes. unto a place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. And we'll get to the ites later. <laughs> God is having a conversation with Moses. And he is calling Moses into a place of leadership. He wants Moses to go into Pharaoh and to tell him, let my people go. Yes. Amen. Sometimes we have to speak to the enemy and say, let my people yes, go. Lord. Sometimes we have to plead the blood of Jesus yes. Christ and say, let my people yes. go. Let my children go yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Let my family go yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Let my mind go yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Let my emotions go yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Let me go in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord. See, the tactic of the enemy is to get you to believe that you're still the same person you were before. But you are not that person anymore. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And he wants to bring you into good things. He's got good things for you. But sometimes we settle. We settle for the land, the first land that he's given us. But I'm telling you what, I want more. Yes. I want more that God has for me. I want more freedom in my heart. I want more, more joy in my life. Yes. I want more peace in the midst of sorrow. Yes, Lord. And look, he'll give you good gifts, okay, yes. external yes. gifts. But I'm talking about if everything was taken away from you now, would we still have that joy that he has given us? Help us. Right. See? It's not a joy that the world gives you. No. Right. The world can't give it and the world, it can't take it away. It doesn't matter what we're facing. It doesn't matter what we're going through. We can still praise the Lord. Yes. And he's having this conversation with Moses. And he says that I am the Lord. Lord there is in all capitals. And that means a covenant keeping God. He is under a legal agreement. This is a legal agreement with his son. God made an illegal agreement. Legal, not illegal. <laughs> That's what we used to do. <laughs> it was a legal agreement with his son by his blood on the cross. That I am the Lord. And I'm going to keep my promises. It is not based on what Mike does. It is not based on what AJ does. It is not based on what Jacob does. It is based on what Jesus has already yeah. done. Yeah. That means, yeah. praise God. Yeah. That means if you walked in here this morning, let me tell you a story real quick. 
I know when it's going to be a good message and when the Lord wants to speak, not because of me, but because the enemy attacks me continuously. And this week has been like the week from hell. And I'm going to be honest with you. Every time I woke up, I'm like, man, this day is going to be better. And it just got worse. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so this morning I'm driving here and my dog has a cut on his ear and he got blood all over my my white shirt, completely white shirt. And I was so frustrated. And the enemy, and look, that might not be a big deal to you, but when you've had a week from hell and it's just the last cherry on the top, that my good, now I gotta go to Walmart and get a shirt and do all this stuff. Yes, I got a Walmart shirt on. <laughs> okay? I'm still anointed in Walmart, okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. God likes to, the enemy likes to bring up frustration right, and cause right, us right. to not be able to believe the promises of God. But I'm, I'm here to tell you that the Lord is a covenant-keeping God. Yes, and is. I was frustrated yes. before I walked in the door. Yes, I was going to preach. And I'm frustrated. I'm human. Yeah. And I was like, Lord, I don't even know if I want to pray right now. But I better pray because you got to do this because I'm frustrated. And God began to move on my heart and move me out of the way and say, Angela, I, I want you to give a word to my people and to let my people go. He's in the delivering act this morning. And I, I say that to say this. He doesn't move based on me. He moves based on him. Because he's faithful. Even when we're not. Thank you, Jesus. Even when you're frustrated. Yeah, yeah. Even when you're doubting. Thank you, Lord. Even when you're depressed. Yeah. Even when you're sad. Even when you're anxious. Yeah. Even when you're stubborn. Yeah. Even when you're prideful. Even when you want to do your own thing. He's still God. Yeah. And he's still moving. And he's still delivering today. Yes, he is. Because of his covenant and his agreement and his promises and his word. Thank you, Lord. And when he says something, Hallelujah. you can trust it. Yeah. You can trust him. Yeah, Hallelujah. And he says, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. That means that his people were under affliction. What does that word affliction mean? That means they were depressed. They were in misery. It is something that is causing you pain and causing you to suffer. Something that is bothering you and causing you harm. God's people? God's people living like this? Yes, God's people. There are times and seasons of our life when we're going to have to walk through some pain. Yes, but let me say this. Walk through the pain. Yes, in the name of God. Praise through the pain. Thank you, Lord. Trust through the misery. Trust through through the pain because my Bible says I have surely seen the affliction you, of my people that means that it did not escape his eye their circumstance their situation didn't escape God's eye he's not slumbering he's not sleeping he's not saying you know what Let, pastor Matt you work that out on your own he said I have surely seen that means that word um, surely means that it is a certainty you better believe that you believe that god has seen and he knows yes, he sees and he knows and not only that but it says and i have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters that cry that no one else has seen that no one else has heard okay you don't have to shed a tear but sometimes there's a cry yeah, yeah. in the depths of your belly there's a cry in your heart there's a cry when you lay down at night that you want to see something change you want to see something happen you want to see something change in your own heart and your own life you want to see it in your family you want to see it in your finances you want to see it in your marriage you want to see it in your friendships you want to see it and there's a cry there yes, Lord. It, it said it's a shriek yes. like from down deep yes a deep cry but god said i have heard thank their you. cry thank you lord i have heard and it says by reason of their task masters pastor matt also hit on this i was like man lord okay task master is something that drives you drives you what is driving them in Egypt? What can be driving us in this world? Is the world driving us? I want you to think. 
Is ambition driving us? Is loneliness driving us? Is rejection driving us? Is fear driving us? Or covetousness driving us? Is lust driving us? us Is doubt driving us? Well, God doesn't want us to live in that. Yes, yes. And he sees what might be harassing you. That's good. He That's sees good. what might be causing That's great yeah. distress yeah. in your heart, in your life. I'm not telling you that they wanted to live there. But those were some things that were attacking them. They were taskmasters and they were causing great distress in the people of God and in their lives. But God wants love. Yes. To be driving us. Amen. He wants the power of the Holy Ghost to be driving us. He wants peace to be driving us. Joy and faith and patience and long suffering. Long suffering yes. in relationships to be driving us. He wants kindness and goodness to yes. be driving us. Yes. He wants gentleness and mercy and forgiveness to be Amen. driving us. Yes. What is driving us? Today, What is causing us to be moved in a certain direction today? And I want to tell you, if it's anything of Egypt, any of those other things and more that I have not mentioned, then God wants to deliver his people today and allow his spirit to be driving us. Amen. And he said, for I know their sorrows. He is acquainted with your sorrows. Yes. He has felt your pain and he understands. And I want to tell you this, he is not ashamed of his people. His people who call, call on his name. See, we can be ashamed sometimes right, when we look right. in the mirror. Or we can be ashamed of our, our, our own friends or family members. But God is not ashamed of your struggle. He wants to change your name yes. like he did with Jacob. He is the God of your struggle. So he knows your sorrow. He is acquainted with it. And he said, okay, I hear, I see, I know, but he doesn't leave us there. And I love that about God. I love that it says, and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. I, the Lord speaking here, have come down. When we are in his presence, there is nothing that can stand in his presence. There is no pain. There is no grief. There is no sorrow. There is no shame. There is no bondage that can stand in the presence of God. He sent his son to come down to deliver you and I so we can walk in the freedom and the liberty that he has afforded to us. Amen. But we have to lay hold of it. We have to trade our sorrow. Yes. We have to trade our sorrow for joy. It's the best exchange you will ever make in your life. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 And he said, I have come down. And this is in the Old Testament. So he's talking about what he's coming to do. And he has already come down for us. And now he sends his presence to us. And it says... That he has come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. And I was thinking about a hand. And a hand is something that has a grip over us. A hand is something that holds us. That maybe allures us or entices us to go in another direction. Rather than the direction that the Lord wants us to go in. Faith will always move you forward. Faith will move you forward. And Galatians 1, 4 says, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world. That means we need deliverance from this world. Amen. From the world system. From the things of this world. Yes, Lord. We, we need him to deliver us from this present evil world. According to the will of God and our Father. It is God's will. That you be delivered from the things of this world that try to have a grip on you, that try to not let you go. It is God's will. He sent his son to deliver you from that. So the next time that something comes up to harass you, to bring you pain, to bring you grief, you can remind yourself, God sent his son to deliver me from not just sin, but this present evil world that's trying to take me away and separate me from the Father. That's right. See, that's what the things of this world does. Yes. They separate you yes. from the Father. They try
try to get you away from the presence and the power of God. They try to keep you from hearing the word of God and coming into this church service. It tries to keep you from the truth. The, the enemy tries to close off your ears and close off your eyes so you can no longer see, so you can no longer hear the word of God. And the further we drift away from the truth, the more we can't see and the more we can't hear. But God sent his son to come down and say, I came to deliver my people yes. from the hold yes. of the you, Egyptians. Hallelujah. 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 And then I love this because it says that he heard, he knows, and he came to deliver. But check this out. Once he delivers you, he gives. Mm -hmm. Once he delivers you, it says, I have come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptian, Egyptians and to bring them up and out. Yes, Lord. Come on. He's come to bring us up and out yeah. of the land unto a good land. Thank you, up means he's going to bring you to a higher place. Mm -hmm. He's going to bring you to a higher place. Yes, above the enemy, above the lies, Hallelujah. above the tactics, yes. above your flesh, yes. above it all, all your bent, all our weaknesses and inconsistencies. He's yes. going to mount us up. He's going to give us more. He's going to take us up and out, up and out. He's come to deliver you and then put you in a good land. Yeah. Flowing with milk and honey. And I wish my kids were in here because I teach them this all the time. I said, guys, what does milk do? They said, make you strong. Yeah. What does milk do? It makes you strong. So Jesus has come to take you up and out and plant you in a land and in his presence and in his word that is going to make you strong. Yes. Amen. And I'm not talking about just strong on the outward, mustering yeah. up some strength. I'm talking about the very core yeah. of who you are. Yeah. That when you are shaken to your yeah. core yeah. by a catastrophe that happens in your life, that you are able to stand because he has taken you up and out and he has placed you in himself and you are able to stand in faith. Yes, Lord. That doesn't mean you're not going to cry. Right. That right. means that you're not going to weep and That's wail. Right. That doesn't mean that you're not going to kick and scream. That mean, that doesn't mean you're not maybe going to mess up. Right. But that means that he can bring you back to that core. Yes, that very core yes. of faith that has Thank made you, you stand and made you strong. And then milk, I mean, that's milk, but then honey is sweet. Yes, Lord. So not only is it going to make you strong, but it's going to make you peaceable mm. thank you lord it's gonna be pleasant mm. it's gonna be good yeah. it's gonna be fruitful mm. it's gonna be something that brings goodness into your life thank you, lord. and yeah we could get outward things that are good and nice and pretty but i'm talking about a goodness of god yes. a sweetness of his presence i don't know about you but i want more yes, of his lord. presence yes. Yes. i want to know when i'm walking down the street that i can feel his yes. presence yes. one of the things that um at the lock-in if i'm going to share this Naya, um brother mark he came and he helped us with his wife and he said look and i'm just going to give you this because sometimes we can come in here and we can take what we know in the presence of god for granted That's right. i'm just saying that yeah and i can i can go through the motions but mark said that when we were outside playing with the kids playing water games at the park that he could sense the presence you, of Jesus. god he said i've never been anywhere where i was playing a game yes Lord. and i could sense the presence of god Thank you, Jesus. that's what i'm talking about yeah. the sweetness yeah. the tenderness yeah. Of God's presence yeah. in our life, yes. not just in a service, you, but Jesus. all the time Hallelujah. when the kids are playing games. Yes. Yes. I was standing up here and they were playing dodgeball, and God is my witness. I just began to worship, and Bree was across the room and it caught her ear, and she began to worship with me. But they were playing, I mean, they were pegging each other with dodgeball. <laughs> Lucas has an arm on him like you would not believe, and Royal, too. And there, these balls are flat. Yeah, we had this whole place up, you wouldn't believe what was looking like yesterday dodgeballs all over this place okay but i was sitting here and the presence of god began to hit me as they're beaming each other with dodgeballs 
But it was like the Lord was just showing me this is what I have for my people. This is the safe haven that I have for my people. This is where your children can come and learn of the truth and be in the presence of God. Uh, Manny was telling me a story about Gavin that a boy from Texas had a cross on his phone. I'm just giving you some testimony. And the boy had a cross on his phone and Gavin goes, you know what that is? That's a cross of Jesus. And he was like, what's that? Wow. No, think about that. Some of the some people don't know. Right, right. They don't know. They don't know who Jesus is. And sometimes we come in here and the peace of God and the presence of God and we tend to take it for granted. But I want to tell you today, let's wake up, church. Let's wake up and be grateful for what God has given us. Let's be grateful for what he's given the children. Let's be grateful what he's given us. We have something that the world doesn't have and the world can't stand on what they have. It will be taken but what God has given us will make us strong and peaceable and fruitful. But I want to I want to tell you this: when He hears, sees, knows, delivers, and brings you on up and out, get ready, because there's a fight about to take place. Because He said, "I'm going to bring them into the Canaan land," but all the ites are there. All those ites are fleshly bent. See. After we get saved and God brings us up and out and can constantly deliver us, us, he says, okay, now I brought you up and out of that. I'm going to deal with this now. Come on. Yeah. I brought, okay, so I'm going to bring you up and out of that, and now let's deal with this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to bring you up and out of that, and now let's deal That's with right. this. Yeah. See, he's constantly changing us from yeah. glory to glory, yeah. from image to yeah. image. Yeah. He's constantly reconstructing, redoing what, look. Somebody, I don't remember what pastor said it, but I liked it. He said, you don't wear the clothes you wore when you were four years old anymore. That's right. <laughs> right. That season is over, y'all. We're not wearing them clothes no more. Yeah. Yeah. Troy, you're not fitting in Shep's clothes no more, right? <laughs> so that season is over and we grow in the things of God. And God yeah. wants us to grow, but yeah. there's things he wants to deal with. And I asked the Lord, has anybody ever been really resentful before? Like, God, why? change this already yeah. man this thing is still the, oh, okay I'm the only one <laughs> that, says, that says God th why did you have to leave this you delivered me from drugs right, you delivered right. me from jail you right. delivered me from all this stuff that goes on out there in the street you delivered me but I'm still dealing with this mm, yeah. why Lord because yeah. with one word you can deliver with yeah. one word with one move of your hand you can yeah. set me free with you delivered me yet, Lord. I don't understand it. And we can get resentful and hard towards the Lord right, when we right. see those things. Right. Because we know his power. But in Judges 3, 1, it says, Now these are the nations which the Lord, listen, these are the nations, the fleshly things, which the Lord left. Uh-oh. Why would he do that? Right, right. To prove Israel. That word prove means to test yes. Israel. Test them how? By them. By those fleshly bents in your life. Right. God is going to test you and prove you to be true. Even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan. See, he was. they were brought into a good large land. You were brought out of darkness into light. Yeah. But he said, I'm going to leave some things there to test you, to prove you, to teach you to war. Mm. And if you don't war by faith, we're going to be overtaken. That's good. Amen. And it says, only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach. He was instructing, learning, and making you skillful. God doesn't want to just save you so you could sit there. He wants to save you and make you a skillful learner and Christian. Yes. yes. Why? So that you could go tell others. Amen. That Amen. you can be the one to war for your family. Yes. It says to teach them to war. See, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities and powers of darkness and wicked rulers right. of the air. And how we fight is we fight by faith. Yes. We fight by believing. Yes. There is nothing that you can muster up or try to do to fix anything to fix yourself. Amen. We war against principalities 
and powers of darkness, and he has already overcome. Yes. He has already overcome. Yes. I'm telling you, this week, I had to remind myself when I got the enemy used people in my life this week, yes. close people to me this yes. week. And I was like, and they didn't even know it. And sometimes our flesh, and it just iron sharpens iron, okay? There's just some things that God is roughing out and, and ironing out and trying to work out within us. But I'm telling you, if I didn't remind myself, I'm not wrestling against so-and-so and such-and-such and, such and that person at the gym that rubbed me the wrong way, okay? Because I, I'll tell you, I almost <laughs> stepped out of the wrong spirit. <laughs> But I literally got in my car when I had a run in with somebody and I sat there and I started to weep because it hurt my feelings. I'm a crier. And, and I had to remind myself, I wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers of darkness. Yeah. That are that it's not even about that person. Right. right. It's about to get you off. That's right. See, God is you using that situation, that circumstance, that person. God's using it to test you and prove you, but the enemy will use it to pull you away and to get you confused and to get you doubting and to get you not believing. But God said, I'm going to move them up and out. I'm going to deliver them. I'm going to bring them into the land, but I want to teach my people to war, my people that are called by my name, that they would humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, and I will heal their land. And look, this is the condition that the people were in. Yeah. And this is the condition you and I can find ourselves in yes, yes. very often. Right, right. But God is not in the act of saving once, but he will save you from yourself as many times as he has Amen. to. Amen. 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 And in the scripture, Exodus 5, 1, it says, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, let my people go. Yes that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. See, it wasn't about Moses or Aaron. It was about God and that God was going to rescue his people. But he needs willing vessels. He needs vessels like you and I that have been tested, that have been proven, that know the struggle. Look, I always tell people that I minister to, I am a very real, touchable minister. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to act like I'm something that I'm not. I'm not going to know. I go through some things. Right. And I feel some ways. Right. And I doubt the Lord at times. Right. And I need him to pick me up and lift me up. And Moses and Aaron, I mean, Moses was like, I can't go before Pharaoh. I stop. Right, right. We look at our inconsistencies, we look at our weaknesses, we look at our failures, and we think, I can't go. Yeah. I can't tell the people. Did you just see what I did yesterday, Pastor Matt? You really want me to preach to these people? <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> but God said, no, I'm going to use you. Right. Amen. <laughs> I'm going to use you because uh, my hand is upon you, because my gifts and callings were, are without repentance, yes, yes. because it doesn't matter, because it's based on the blood and not what you do anyway. Yeah. Now, that doesn't give you a reason to sin. Don't, so don't go walk out the door and say, Angela said it's under the blood anyway. Because <laughs> right, right. okay, that's not what I'm saying. That's right. But I'm saying he gives us the blood for power. Right. He gives us the blood to cover, to change, and for power. Yeah. And he yeah. used Moses and Aaron. And I want to tell you that this is a church, and we meet many people. Naya and I, when we're staying at the hotel or we're at a restaurant around here, the people are hungry, y'all. Yeah, yeah. And I ask you to ask the Lord to give you eyes to see. Yeah. I mean, I hear testimony after testimony of Robert and, and all his men that are on the job and, and what's going on. And um, Yvette at her job, and people are praising the Lord. And Yvette might get frustrated, right? <laughs> But all of, a sudden, all of a sudden, Yvette said, I just begin to praise God, yeah. and it just catches, and she hears other people praising God. Thank so I want to encourage you, in the midst of it all, yes. in the midst of it all, you just keep being used of yes. the Lord. Yes. You just keep telling the people about yes. Jesus. Yes. You just keep going and saying, let my people go. Yes. Because I'm telling you, we're at the hotel, and I'm walking down the hall, and I'm like, there's this guy, and he was singing. 
singing this rap song walking down the hall and it was like seven o'clock in the morning and he is blasting it and he's getting it in right and i said naya go out there and start singing a worship song walk along the hall as if she didn't do it but it would have been good but there is something that is to be said about a believer positioned that can be crying out on the name of jesus See, we pray, I pray for the people in the hotel room as I'm walking by. Jesus, touch that room. Jesus, touch this room. Jesus, you move here. And then all of a sudden, people are asking us, where are y'all from? Right, right. <laughs> where, and I get, we get to tell them, well, yeah. come, come. Yeah. come on in. Yeah. Yeah. Come to the church. Yeah. Come hear about our Jesus. Amen. Come on. Yes. So yes. God can use you anywhere. Yes. I can stand here for 45 minutes, but I live a lot more. Yes. If you get what I'm saying, yes. yeah. there can be anywhere for you to say, let my people go. Yeah. Let, yeah. let those children go that you see Amen. on the street corner. Amen. Let them go that you see in school. Lucas, you can go into your high school yes. and start bleeding yes. the blood of Jesus Amen. over Amen. those children in Amen. there. Zeph, you can do the same thing where you're at on the baseball yeah. field. We can start bleeding the blood of Jesus and saying, let my people go. Go. Yes, Hallelujah. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Jesus. Let my people go. He has given you the authority and the boldness when Satan himself has come to rear his ugly head in your life. Now you can plead the blood of Jesus. You hear what I'm saying? You have the authority Amen. in Jesus' Amen. name when that temptation has come to take you down one more time. And that temptation, it doesn't have to be a thing. It could just be a doubt. Right? Yeah. But it could be a thing too. Yeah. That wants to pull you away from the Lord. You have the legal right in Jesus' name to say, no, I am a blood-bought child of the King. Yeah. I am a child of God and my family shall be saved. And my loved ones shall be saved. Yeah. And, my, and my church family shall be delivered yeah. and saved and delivered and saved yeah. and delivered and saved. Yeah. We should see more children. Come into the kingdom of God. Amen. We should see the youth come into the kingdom of God. And I don't know about you. I've been talking to Nia about this a lot lately. I want to see some young adults coming into the kingdom of God. Because if you look around in this room, we got really, really young. We got middle. But then we got older, okay? We're missing the 20s. Yeah, yeah. I want to see the 20s Amen. come into the kingdom yeah, of God. Yeah, yeah. I want to see them come in. Yeah. Bring them in. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. And you have the authority based on the word of God. Yeah. I'm going to give you a scripture for it. Colossians 2.14 says, Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them. You want to know what you have in Christ? Everything that has stood against you has been nailed yes. to the cross. Thank Everything you. that you have done of guilt and shame before, past, present, and future has been nailed yes. to the cross. Hallelujah. And he has spoiled, he has ruined everything that will come against you and try to destroy you and your family. He has been defeated. He has been triumphed over openly. Jesus wasn't ashamed to die on the cross and do it openly in front of all because he wanted people to know that it is finished and that he had stomped on the head of Satan and all his cohorts and everything that would come to destroy your life and your family's yeah. life and those around you. Yeah. He has triumphed openly over them. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord? Could you hear it? I know, when I read this scripture, I'm just like, oh, how arrogant. Right, 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 right. But you remember when we were like that? Yeah. Oh, who, who, the Lord who? Right. I used to tell my mom, mom, I don't want to hear about your Jesus. But God knew. <laughs> he knew how to get my attention. <laughs> and Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? Can you hear it? Yeah. To let Israel go. I know not the Lord. Neither will I let Israel go. Satan is not going to let you go easily. He is going to tighten his grip. Yeah. He's going to try to get you any way he can. He can't get you in one door, he's going
going to try to get you in another. And if he can't get in the front door, he's going to come in the back door. I guarantee you that when you start moving forward in the things of God, in the kingdom of God, and you say, I'm going to keep going on with Jesus, well, you hold on. Right. You hold on because that's when the enemy says, I'm going to grip on a little bit tighter. I'm going to put a little bit more oppression on them. I'm going to come and bring a little bit more confusion in them. I'm going to come and try to get them to doubt a little bit more. And his grip tries to get a little bit stronger. But I don't know about you, but I read the end of the book and we win. Yeah. We win. Yeah. We win. Right, right. 
No one was there. Everything was gone. And he said, though you slay me, yes. still I will trust oh, you. He yes, said, for I know that my Redeemer lives and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. There was an experiential knowledge. There was a heart knowing that I know 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 that my Redeemer lives. Yeah, I know that he's going to come through. And though you slay me, though you've taken everything, I will trust you. Yeah, I'm going to trust you in the darkness. I'm going to trust you in the confusion. I'm going to trust you in the chaos. I'm going to trust you no matter what happens. Here comes the enemy to test Job. And God says, my servant Job. That's my servant Job whom he loves. And you know what the Lord does? He blesses him and he gives him double. He gives him more than he could have ever asked for before. But he had to go through that process. And we could say, what a harsh God. What a harsh God to do something like that. But he is testing us and he is proving us. And he is allowing you and I to go through things so we could see the rest of the kingdom of God grow. So we could say, I went through that. I went through that. And look what the Lord yes. has done. Yes. I went yes. through some Lord. slaying. And look what the Lord has done. I went through some troubled waters. Yes. But look what the Lord has yes. done. I have been hurt. I have been discouraged. Yes. But look what the Lord has done. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exodus 6, 1, and this is what I'm going to be closing with. Thanks. So he sees, he hears, he knows, and he delivers. Remember that Satan won't let you go easily. So get ready for a fight. And he said in verse 6, 1, the Lord said unto Moses, now you shall see. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to see some things happen. Yes. I'm ready to see the Lord do some things. And he said, now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And God said to Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord's response Hallelujah. to the evil which Moses had, I mean, Pharaoh had afflicted upon his people was, now you shall see, it shall come to pass. If God be for us, then yes. who can yes. be against Hallelujah. us? And God tells Moses, you shall see. This is, this is a literal, you're going to see it with your eyes. Yes. You're going to see my people yes. go, let be let go. You're going to see things change. Yes. You're going to see chains broken. You're yes. going to see Amen. hearts mended and healed. You're going to see things happen. Yes. It's not just, now sometimes we got to see things in the spirit before they yes. happen. We got to believe things in the spirit before they yes. happen. But this was a physical thing that was about to happen before their eyes. Yes, yes. He said, you shall see. And it shall appear. And then it says, what I will do to Pharaoh for with a strong hand. Remember that hand that Satan had, the Egyptians had on his people? Well, God has a stronger hand than the hand of the enemy. God has a greater hand than the hand of the enemy. And that strong hand was a, a powering might. Strong hand means to seize with violence as a possession. God will fight for you more than anyone in this whole world. If you can't have some, if you don't have a friend to fight for you, God is fighting for you. And he will destroy anything in his way to save your soul and to get to you. Amen. You are his possession. You are bought with the blood of Jesus right. Christ. Amen. The cross seized and made a way for you to come into the kingdom of God. That you would be his. And he's not going to let go of you easily. God is not letting go. And if you don't quit, he's not going to quit. Satan had a grip on God's people, but God has a greater grip on you. God was on the move and the cross made a way of escape. It gave, it gives you authority over every fleshly bent, over everything trying to turn you away. He shall make every crooked path straight. Yeah. He shall make every low place high, bring every high place low. He's going to make it a plane Amen. so you could just walk. Amen. 
You could just walk with the master. God is on the move. And he said, for I am the Lord. I was, I am, and I shall always be. Yes. Naya, if yes. you would come up. I want to leave you Romans 16, 20. And it says, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. amen. That amen means this is truth. This is truth. Listen to the scripture again. Romans 16, 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. And the grace, grace meaning the power of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This 